Good to see you this morning. I hope you've had a good day in Sunday school. Let me uh, look, look with me quickly about our announcements and get right into our time of worship. Today, you'll see that we've, we're pretty busy. Y'all y'all ready? Y'all ready? Today, today at 2 o'clock is our life chain. And life chain means... Uh, it's where we get on the first Sunday of October across our country. We have uh, churches gather on usually on like a Main Street area in their local town, and uh, they will have different posters that you it's just a silent kind of thing. So you would just hold these types of posters, uh, bringing attention to um, uh, pro life and issues related to. Uh, celebrating what God's given us through through Jesus Christ, but it is dealing with the pro-life uh, stance of the Christians, and uh, so we have different types of signs that you can wear, you can uh, hold. Our life chain event each year is held right across from the post office uh, on the opposite side of the post office, and so um, different churches will gather. We'll have these. And it's from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Uh, that's across the country. And so as we think about that, we'd love to join us. Uh, you may want to bring a chair if you want to. Do not park on the street in front of the post office or where we're standing because then we will go see. So you need to park somewhere else on Main Street. And uh, you can join us. We'll have a lot of posters type of things that you can, can use. If we have more people in that, then you can just take turns uh, holding the signs. So that's today. Uh, across from the post office here on Main Street. And you come join us. Three o'clock then, if you'll see your bulletin, you'll notice that then we're having our, our house one. We, we had the list of items to we're going to think about purchasing and bringing to uh, for the uh, uh, hustlers. And that will be at three o'clock. Uh, just meet us here in the fellowship hall. And that will be a, a good time as well, fellowship time, and collecting some of those needs for the family. And then we should be able to just take them right over to their house. So if you're purchasing things, sometimes you decorate them all up. And so some things you may want to, you don't have to. Uh, the main thing is just to get down here so we can get on to their house. So come here at 3 o'clock for the house morning. Get to meet the hostels as well. And that's uh, 3 o'clock. I don't know if we have an ending time, but uh, it's we have a, probably 4 o'clock. Yeah, probably 3 to 4. So, so there's a couple things for you to think about as you look at the bulletin. Uh, please remember that there are several other things coming up in the near future. Uh, so, let's see what's there in a second. So, so about three weeks from now is our being the homeless in Tulsa, and we will need to bring. Uh, we need some items uh, to take with us. We're feeding hot dogs and hamburgers, but uh, we could use those little uh, toiletry, small travel size things that we can put in some sacks to give to those that are homeless, so they they can keep them personally with them. Uh, some snack kind of food, so you know, whether it be granola bars or things that are individually wrapped that we can put in there as well. Uh, so that would be helpful. If you have any uh, jackets or coats that could be used, now this is October 22nd, anticipating that it will get cooler sometime, sometime in the near future. Although it was 48 or whatever yesterday morning, Blue right back up. Uh, hats and gloves, all those kinds of things would be useful if you've got. And we're talking about gently used or new items. It would be great to give to them if you've got some uh, uh, long sleeve stuff that'd be helpful as they move into the fall winter season. This is for the homeless. We are going to be doing this right across from the the uh, day center for the homeless, which is downtown in Tulsa area. So that's where we'll be at. 
So if you're looking at that, some of you have already said you're going to go, some of you doesn't work that weekend. So we'll have this again probably in late February, early March, another kind of thing for us to do similar to this. Uh, but if you can help, that'd be great. Uh, bring those items and we just need to collect those. And then as you know, uh, Trunk of Treats is the very next Wednesday here at our church. We're going to reach our community. We have the place for the kids to come over in our parking lot. And so that means we need to start collecting uh, Halloween some candy to put in with the trunks. So that's a couple of things that are coming up. We'll see some other things. Our annual meeting for our association, which our church is a member of, is next Sunday afternoon. So we'll be in prayer for that. A lot of other things are in the bulletin, things for you to think about. But we're glad you all are here to worship the Lord. Um, let's go ahead and let's I know we've got birthdays today. Yeah, we do. Come on up here, gang. Well, it's good to see everybody out there today. I know we've got a few that's out and about running around different places in the country for, for a few short, but it's good to see everybody out there today. Everybody right here, don't you just love these cool mornings, right? Blessed us with some fall-like weather, and I love this time of year. Let's sing a happy birthday and, uh, and, and uh, let's celebrate anniversaries. Do we have any out there? Yeah, I know so. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. In my 
support our church and our ministries that we have and we pray and we ask everybody else to pray as well about where God has you in this and I hope everybody has but we're getting ready to, to take up that offer but it, once again this is not just a one time thing this is trusting in the Lord to make provision for you the, the fact of the matter is it all belongs to him anyway because he he gives us our help for our jobs. He gives us our jobs. He provides for us in special ways. We're just being stewards of over what he has given us. And we need to support his ministry and we need to support our church. Now, I'm going to give you all just a little bit of a information that I know to be fact. And I want you to know before I even say it that, that uh, there's no privacy that's been invaded in any way. But... There's just a small percentage of our church that we know from what the financial clerk has given us that actually tithe. Now, comparing to other churches, we're way down the, the ladder, you know, and I know that other churches right now, we're living in finances, times that are, finances are hard to come by and everything costs so much. But once again, if you must ask the percentage that do tithe within your church, of the provision that God has made for them, I'll promise you that they'll say, I've not lost anything. God's given me so much more. 
So once again, uh, I'm calling the ushers to come on up here, Tom, you can get your guys and gals to come on up here. But something that we need to be asking ourselves, you know, is it all about here or is it about there? Investing in things eternal is, is so important that we do that. So uh, I wanna, before I pray for our offering today, I want to uh, ask you once again to get on board, make it make it permanent, make it be something from now on, and just check it out, check God out, and see if He don't do, make it up to the point where you won't even miss it. And I know He does. And Rusty, yes, thank them for what. Yeah, that's exactly right. Hey, there's there's diligent people, and and a lot of people give. They may not tithe. But I do want to thank everybody in here. But once again, we just need to search our hearts, and, and we all know, God knows, there's, uh, that, that he let us know exactly where he wants us in, in this situation that we have. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you so much that you're on the throne. We thank you that we have our platform as a church right here to lift you up and honor you as Lord of our lives. And I, I thank you that you've given us this wonderful place to do this, do, to do that and have a fellowship that uh, loves you and, uh, and does support you, Father. But I pray that uh, you multiply the offering today in such a way, you know, and speak to people's hearts that possibly need to step it up, that uh, uh, you make up so much more. You feel the cups to running over. And we thank you so much for that. And I ask today that everybody give with a generous heart. And bless those as they do, Father. Bless this church, Father. Multiply what we have. And we we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand and send a couple more. Hey, I want to tell everybody, I don't know if y'all remember this one right here, but we're so blessed to have her back. Uh, she came and said that she wants to sing for Jesus. She needs to Amen. Sing Jesus. She's a blessing, got a wonderful voice, and we're so blessed to have her as a part of our praise and worship. Oh, my. 
Yes, he died for me through the sun. 
finished up Titus last week, and so we're going to uh, move right into Psalms, going into the Old Testament, middle, the, the psalm book, the hymnals, the, the song of the church, uh, the New Testament, and the Old Testament. When we think about these psalms, uh, we're going to have a great time. I, I want to give you a psalms challenge. 
Let's see if you can do it, okay? I think it's a challenge for the church. I think it's a challenge for your home. I think it's a challenge for yourself. Now, if you looked in your bulletin, uh, I hope you didn't throw that out, but you should have seen something like this in the middle of your bulletin. And uh, I've got some extras in case you lost yours already. Um, I don't know if you like challenges or tests or uh, uh, some kind of way of measuring things, but I think this is a good thing for us to do as a church. Now, here's the reason why I think it's a good thing for us to do this Psalms challenge. I'll tell you what it is here in just a second. But as we live in uh, the times that we find ourselves living, not just because of our church and we're dealing with some financial things, that's a time, that's a test. It's a test from the scriptures, a test from God to how we handle our money, both as a, as a church body with what we receive from you and how you handle money in your homes and how you honor God with what he's blessed you with. Um, you, you know that's something that's going on across our culture. It's not just Wilberton. It's not just Latimer County. It's not just Southeast Oklahoma. It's across the nation as we deal with the work of the kingdom of God through the gifts of God's people. We know that's a, an issue. But across our culture, even beyond the church issue, is the issue of inflation and, and uncertainty with money, uh, those things. So that's, and has that, is this the first time it's ever happened? Some of you old folks like me, is this the first time you've seen in our, in our country that we've had issues related to money and inflation and, and uh, job security or insecurity? If you're anywhere near my age, you would say, no, it's not the first time. If you're some of the oldest here, I mean, some of our oldest, oldest could say, no, I can remember when I was a kid growing up. Some, we still have a few that are alive that lived and were born during the Great Depression time. Just a few. But we still have some that can remember as a child living in that time period. So we know that we've lived in times of war. And so as we look across our country, or we look across our world, we know there's a lot of uncertainties. And if you come up and start talking to people, we can easily get into the place where before we get through with the conversation, we're going like, life is just terrible. You know what I'm saying? And if we're not careful as believers, we may jump right into that cesspool of terribleness. Now, I'm not saying... I know we start the song, Brother Rusty, remind us to smile. We're singing some of our songs. We should. But there's some times when you come in here, it's going to take a while, Brother Rusty, for us to start singing about the Lord and getting that smile because we've just come out of a terrible week, a raw, a really bad, maybe a bad day. And so some things have happened to you. Some things have happened to your family. Uh, and so as all that's going on, you say, man, it's going to take me, Give me a couple minutes before I can get get my, what is it? Get my mind and my spirit and my heart adjusted to the promises and the certainty that God has given me through Jesus Christ. Because in our world, we can get distracted and off path. So in the midst, what was it in one song? In the fire. I was thinking, Brother Rusty, do you think, I'm just going to pick on you for a little bit since you know you're you're the worst you're a worship leader here, and uh, although you have a whole crowd, which is kind of cool, I love that. What that count? Eight? There's a whole bunch of here. Those those sat, uh, those 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 three guys they got thrown into the fire. Do you think they were singing um, Heavenly Sunlight? What what was the song <laughs> that was on their lips as they're as they're being thrown in? And, <laughs> I saw the lot. You think they're singing all songs? So I felt the leap. I felt the heat. You know, as they're being thrown into that fiery furnace, and the guys that are throwing them in are dying. You know, yeah. you know the, the guards that threw them in, they died. It was so hot. So it wasn't a fake heat. It wasn't one of these false heats. It was. It was. It was hotter than habanero or ghost peppers or whatever you may want to think of is how hot it was. So what they they were experiencing something pretty bad. But they said, we're going to do it because we're not going to fall down and worship this, this, this uh, false image. You know, we're going to worship God. So I, 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 God was speaking to my heart as, as, I, as, I, as I was pre preparing for this, this month, these 30 days uh, that we're going to focus on the Psalms. I said, we, not just, not just for October, but then to enable you to have our hearts focused so when we come to Thanksgiving week, which is just going to be about two or three weeks later, 
where you will have you will you will have um, the opportunity to really praise God at Thanksgiving and not just gather as families going like, what are we going to do? You'll say, I know what we're going to do. And so one of the things we do as a church is we celebrate, we connect, and we serve. And those are some of the things we do. And we want to focus this month on celebrating what God has done in our life. And so what a great way by studying and reading in the book of Psalms um, about the, how people face different things and God used their praise of him and they became scripture. This is, this is not, unless it's actually a quote from, from the scriptures, these individual books, these songs here, are not inspired. You, you know what I'm saying? They are used by people to praise God. They're not the same, unless it's a direct song out of, out of you know, scripture songs like that, unless it's directly from here and all that's in there. But this right here that we're reading, these songs are divinely inspired by God through individuals to be a part of the worship of God. How do we sing to the Lord? Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean that we need to throw this away and we no longer use this. God uses your ability to praise him by your testimony, by your singing, by your uh, giving, by your acts of, of service. He uses those. But this gives us a way of looking into to his word and think about how these different individuals uh, help us to worship God. And so these are songs. So when we read this, let me give you just a couple, one of my pet peeves after I went through the Old Testament really spoke to my heart. So this is the book of Psalms. Individually, it is a psalm. So when we say Psalm 23, that's correct. If you say Psalms 23, that's incorrect. Psalm is, psalm is singular, Psalms is plural. This is the book of Psalms. It is not a chapter. You'll hear people say, turn to, to chapter uh, 35 in the book of Psalms. It's not a chapter. It'd be like me saying, turn to chapter number uh, 233 in your book. Okay, You all know that. It's not you say, turn to what? Him. Okay. Psalms. The word song is song in the Greek. That's the word psalms. In the Hebrew, tehillim is the word that's used in the Hebrew Bible. And that is the word praise. So when you get those together, and both those are a way of understanding, this is how we praise, how we sing to the Lord. Okay? So these are songs that we can sing to the Lord. Now, obviously, we have lost, uh, in a lot of these, we've lost the actual tune. You'll see in, in your hymnal, you'll see the tune, and you'll see the, the one that wrote the words, the lyrics. Okay? So these are the lyrics that we don't have all the tunes to them. Now, we have taken some of these song, these psalms, or an individual song, and put it to some music. That doesn't make that any worse, as long as you're using this, right? So it's good. So we could have a contemporary group do Psalm 23. We could have some uh, Southern Gospel turn it into a song. We could have some, some uh, bluegrass turn it into all sorts of different tunes, and we can make these work. So my challenge, the challenge for us, uh, is it my challenge or is it the Lord asked me to challenge us? Here's the challenge. So in 30 days, in 30 days, read all the songs. Um, I'm trying to figure out how that exactly is. So what I'm using is I'm doing each Sunday, I'm gonna do one song out of, out of a, a group of 30. So I picked from Psalm 1 to 30, and I focus, I'm focusing today on Psalm 23. Next week, I'll go from 31 to, to what, 60, okay? And I've got a psalm, I think it's, I think I'm doing 51, if I remember right. So your goal, our goal, is to read 30 psalms this week. Brother Paul, that's impossible. Is it? It really? No. So, okay. Now, if you pull out your 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 phone, those of you that live by the phone and, 
and everything's on the phone. You can get an app called uh, UVersion. It's got all sorts of translations and, and Bible studies and things like that. Great, great source. It's free. Just get it. looks like a Bible. It's called U, like the letter U, version. And you can go in there, and you can download that if you don't have it already. You can go to the Psalms, and you can do, start with Psalm 1, and you can, put, for those of you that are on the road a lot, you can just start hit play, and as you're driving, it will read for you out loud as you're going down the road, and you will be able to hear. And by the way, faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing by the Word, Word of God. God. Okay, so that's out of Romans 10, so you all can study that. So you can do that. I'm just giving you some shortcuts. So you can take it to the extreme and make your families gather together and do it all together and go into every, I, I think that's probably going to be overkill. But I would like for you to join me. And so then the challenge is, then the challenge is, out of those psalms that you read, you will take and find, as, 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 you're, as you're reading it, you're going to find that somewhere in those 30 psalms the next week, that God's going to speak to you. He's either going to speak to you in the midst of you reading it, or he's going to speak to you in the midst of living it or living life. And what you have read, you're going to experience something, and you're going to go, God, thank you for letting me have read this, because today I know from what I just remember reading or hearing. And so that's what I'm saying. You need to do it as early in the day as you can, okay? Or do it the day before so you remember it the next day. But as you do it, you're going to find one verse. I'd like for you to find it. One verse out of 30 psalms that you can write on this little piece of paper and sign your name and go hang it and there in the in the fellowship hall in that black piece of paper that says Psalms Challenge. And we want to get as many of these up there. This could be from you individually, it could be from your family, uh, however you want to do it, husbands and wives, however you want to do this, and you can put it on there. And so as we see that, we're gonna have this collection of verses and songs that God spoke into our heart about. I believe that as we begin to sing to the Lord, it's like what I was just saying earlier, that somewhere in the midst of the people gathering to sing, no matter where we come from, what we've experienced, we are rejoicing and we're gaining strength and our spirit is not uh, diminished or, or disheartened, but we've come to refocus as a people and as individuals and we know that there is a song on our heart. And there's a song that God has placed in us, and it's the relationship to Jesus Christ. And so as we think about this, you'll write your verse down here, and we'll hang it on there. You'll put your name on there. And by the time we get through with this, should I tell you the rest of the challenge? Let's, let's just do that. Let's just let that soak in. If I tell you the rest of the challenge, you may say, I'm not going to do that. So let me give you a couple of weeks of doing this. And then I'll give you the, the bigger challenge I would love for us to be able to do together on November, uh, the first Sunday in November. Um, so I'll leave that as a teaser, okay? So can you do it? Do, do, do I ask you to come shake my hands and go, oh, I want to do the song challenge. How do I hold you accountable? You know, it's kind of like the title. Man, you know, Brother Rusty and Rusty uh, and, and Glenn, y'all are the finance. You know, we talk about, we, we, we have to hold uh, everybody uh, we, we, we don't tell everybody what to give because everybody's real proud about that. But I know who y'all are. I know who the members are. If if you're if you if you don't put this on the board, it's going to be evident. This is not like giving. Some of you say, "I'd rather you tell me that I'm not giving in front of everybody than tell me that I have to do this." You can do this. How long does it take? to read 30 Psalms. How long does it take to read five a day? Okay. I think you can do this. Okay. You can find a place. And as you do it, may God bless your life because you are reading into your life. Your The words coming into your ears and you're thinking about what God's going to do and what you're facing. And in 30 Psalms, 30 Psalms a week, in 30 songs, you will say, that is what I'm dealing with this week. And these songs are, okay, we're at 2022. These songs, that you, this is ancient. This is way beyond the oldies but goodies songs. These songs, let me see, the latest was written uh, about 
uh, right after exile. So what would that be? 500 BC. The earliest one, I think, is Psalm. I think it's Psalm 90 with Moses. That was written in the time of Moses, which would have been around uh, 13, 1400 BC. So we're talking about these songs are ancient and they're filled full of people that faced difficult times. Everything you can imagine, they faced. Everything that you're dealing with, they have faced. And they still sang to God. I couldn't decide whether to do Psalm 1 or Psalm 23. And I said, I'm going to let you all do Psalm 1 because you need that. And you need to look at yourself. And so I want to do Psalm 23, as I read just a minute ago. And let's think through this. And let's just see how this would happen. So if you were doing this, and you will do this one, by the way. Don't count this as one of your third. Please do not tell me. Brother Paul, I did that. Remember when you read that for us? That doesn't count. Okay? That doesn't count. I'm going to have to do it again. And I've done it all week long. And I've done a few others, too. But I, I, I want you to, to know that as we think about Psalm 23, let me just give you a few things. And I think, did you put it? Yeah. So uh, just in case you don't have your uh, Bible or your app on your phone, you can see it on the screen just so you know that. So so for, for all of us, everybody's heard Psalm 23. This is probably the, one of the most familiar um, scriptures in the Bible. We know John 3, 16, one scripture. Everybody's seen that. Sporting against everything else. And there's a few, the Lord's Prayer, a lot of people will know that. But Psalm 23 is one of those songs. It's, a, it's so many times I've seen it on, 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 at a funeral, you know, on, on the bulletin, the folder for the person that's lost, we see Psalm 23 used. Uh, and so we've heard it put to song. In fact, as I was looking through our hymnal, our hymnal, we have, we have uh, let me see what I see. There is. Um, uh, there's a song, there's a reference to part of this Psalm 23 in and, and hymn number 68, hymn number 463, hymn number 52, and, and one that I'm going to use in just as we end is uh, 422. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Psalm 23. So, how do I know that this psalm will apply to us? How can we not? Psalm 23, verse 1, as we think about this. Who do we, who do you lean on? See, when you're facing life and you're dealing with issues and you're like, oh, woe is me. When we come back and we say the Lord is my, not just the Lord is the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Your shepherd is the Lord. Now this is, uh, there, there's all sorts of things about this, but the word Lord here is, uh, is, is a reference to Yahweh, which is the, the name that God gave to Moses, to the people of Israel, to call God. He is Yahweh. And so they would not say Yahweh because they revered it so much. They would not speak the name of Yahweh. They would use the name uh, Lord. Okay, And that's why in the New Testament we see that reference as, as well. Jesus is Lord means Jesus is Yahweh. He is God. Know that. Know that. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I lack. If Jesus Christ, and we, I'm going to get that to the New Testament as well, but when Jesus, when we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, there's nothing you lack. Everything that you need, he provides. Everything that you need, he provides. He will be with you. His presence will be with you. Look with me in some of the things that we see that he is our great provider. He is our Savior. He is our Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. He lets me. I, I love these things. Here are the things that he provides for us. Not just that we can depend on him, but he provides. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. You know, if you if you just walk around right now, there's nothing green unless it's been watered in all of southeast Oklahoma and beyond. And if you talk to any rancher or anybody that's depending upon them, they've gone beyond worrying about how they're going to get grass to feed their cows. They're going now. My ponds are drying up. Even the deep ones are losing water. They're just they're just it's just going away. And so this makes no sense to them. Somewhere in our life, we will remember eventually that it is God that provides. It's not the weatherman. It's not our skills. It's not, it's not how we form the ponds to capture the water that, by the way, God provides in the rains. So is this a test? Yes, without a doubt, the people are being tested in our area. And now is the time for us to remind them that if the source 
of water, the source of green pastures, the source of what we have to eat or drink is God and God alone. It's not our ability. It's not our measure of how hard we work or how smart we are or how we mix the uh, fertilizers. And this is not picking on the farmers and ranchers. That's for you and for me as well. God will provide. Amen. We have to be faithful with how he provides. And so he leads me beside quiet waters, speaking as a shepherd to the sheep, a place of safety with a where the sheep can get something to drink without getting you know, drowned by falling into the water. He, when we have green pastures, when we have quiet water, something to drink, he renews my life. He restores. Sometimes you come to this building and it's not because of a lack of food or water or something else. You just say, I just, my, my soul is just, it needs renewing. Amen. See, I'm a believer. I have faith in Jesus Christ, but I just I just need to stop and be in the presence of my Savior, my Lord. And that's why we do this this morning. We come. And if you're listening on, I challenge you, get back to church. You've not been, you've got, this is the source where you come together and you are renewed by being in the presence of God with believers. That is important to you. Renewal, renewal happens every week when we gather together. As we come into his presence, he renews my life. He leads me along the right paths. He, if you would, he is, he is a shepherd, and he's a shepherd that is, I guess, what would you call a trail guide? Look at this. He leads me along, along the right paths, righteousness, for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, some would say the valley of the shadow of death, there is an interpretation of the Hebrew word, but the bottom line, it could include death. But it's probably a lot bigger picture of it's so dark you can't see. You got that picture? Have you been out somewhere where you're not familiar and you're having to travel? And we all will pull out our, our phones, which are good for everything, right? And we turn on the little get over here and we, we turn over here and turn on that light. And, and we're, now we can see. And that's great until what? It runs out. The battery will run out. The battery will run out. So, oh, well, mine will run out when I turn the thing on. <laughs> they won't be able to hold me. But the Lord will guide you through the darkest hours you face. Uh, the picture is in the, the valley, the, the mountains on either side, and here's the river or the creek or the water running through and the green pastures. But there's that spot where you're getting there where it finally all the sunlight is gone. And there's no street lights. There's no floodlights. There's nothing you can go flip a switch on and it's totally dark. But Jesus will be there with you. It may not be like the fiery furnace with Shadrach uh, you know, and his buddies, but it, it is for us. There's a place of darkness. And so if you are living in your life this week, Apart from the word of God, I challenge you to join with us and to read these songs so that every day, don't try to make up, don't skip a day and then try to do 10 because then you'll just be defeated. Do five. Do five a day. And if you don't want to do five a day for six days, then do six a day for five days. But you know what I'm saying? Are you going to skip a day? What happens to that day if you've not read some songs? See? Five. Monday through Saturday, you come back on Sunday, bring your little form, stick it over on that wall, and let's just praise the Lord on Sunday for what He's taught you each day, how He's provided for you. And so that's what we see here. And as we look in here, we, He says, Even though I go through the valley, the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow death, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come from me. Two different things, two different things that the shepherd uses. The rod is something that would protect, it was the weapon of choice that the, the, uh, the um, uh, shepherd would use to fend off enemies. And then also the, 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 the staff, that, that crook that he would use to guide and to help the sheep get in the right places and to keep them together. Together. And so as we think about this, Jesus, we know God's going to be with us and they will comfort us with these things. And then, then this picture is, and I'm going to bring you home. The shepherd's bringing us home. Don't you? I, I just like this. Because it kind of changes here. 
that there's a little bit of a change here from the shepherding stuff. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. You need to empty your cup, by the way. Sometimes we hang on to stuff. We keep our cup full of our own stuff. Sometimes we need to get rid of the stuff in our cup so that God can fill us fresh with some new things. So whatever you're hanging on to in your cup, maybe it's time to dump it out, clean it out, and see what God wants to put in it. Come on. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. And in my translation is as long as I live. The, the, the word was endless days, forever and ever. Now that's the Old Testament. Now how is it filled full in the New Testament? How does Jesus complete that? Do you remember, do you remember, do you remember in, in John chapter 10? You may want to read this later, but let me just remind you. It's a passage that talks about the good shepherd. So it's not a quote of Psalm 23, but it's Jesus describing himself as the shepherd. And he says, I am the good shepherd. Now, what was the title of Psalm 23? The good shepherd. And what do we see here? Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. John 10, 11. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired man, since he is not the shepherd and doesn't own the sheep, leaves him and runs away when he sees a wolf coming. The wolf then snatches and scatters him. This happens because he is a hired man and doesn't care about the sheep. Jesus again says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me as the father knows me and I know the father. I lay down my life for the sheep, but I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. Then there will be one flock, one shepherd. And this is why the Father loves me, because I am laying down my life, so I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have the right to lay it down, and I have the right to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. You can keep reading in John 10. And uh, you'll find even more about Jesus laying that out. Jesus is the good shepherd. Psalm 23 is pointing towards the Yahweh God. And Jesus says, I am. That is that word for Yahweh. I am the good shepherd. Jesus is the one that you're going to discover as you read the Psalms 1 through 30 this week. You're going to read about how different people talk about the Word of God, how they have different experiences of life, and as they sing to the Lord. You may see some phrases in some of these songs that are sung in contemporary songs today. You may see some that will remind you of something from a long time ago. And so as we think through the term of Peter 422, and I want you to hear this. Because, you know, I've, all my life I've been singing this little chorus Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness. Am I going to sing it? Does no one else heard this song before? Now listen, folks. If you hear someone singing, if you've heard someone singing and you know the song, please don't leave someone that can't sing up here singing by himself. Please make it a little better. You know what? You, you, you can understand me? You know, you know what I'm talking about? If you don't, I'll just have you come up here and help me. And we'll sing bad together. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. A pilgrim, I didn't even know this. I didn't, you know, Sharon, I'm talking about Falls Creek and youth camps and children's camps and, you know, all these places and church and all this stuff. Probably at the end of Lord's Supper, I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe there's a new one we can sing for Lord's Supper. Uh, a pilgrim was I, and a wandering. In the cold night of sin, I did roam. When Jesus, the kind shepherd, found me, and now I am on my way home. He restoreth my soul when I am weary. He giveth me strength day by day. He leads me beside the still waters. He guards me each step of the way. When I walk through the dark, lonesome valley, my Savior will walk with me there. 
and safely his great hand will lead me to the mansions he's gone to prepare. Wow. Surely goodness. Wow. Mercy. That's Psalm. There, you can look in your hymnals. All the hymnals have uh, hymns. If you look in the back, it tells you some different scripture reference, and that's how you can find what's tied to Psalm 23 or other psalms. I'm just telling you that Satan's going to come against you. Life situations going to come. We're, we, we get older. We have make decisions. We make bad decisions. We make good decisions. Sometimes we make good decisions, and it gets tough because it's a godly decision, and Satan doesn't want you to make any. Satan doesn't want you to make any godly decisions that honors God and lifts up the name of Jesus Christ. He will combat that every step of the way. And so when that happens, things will be thrown your way, things will be hurdles to give to you. But know this, that if you continue to trust in God's word, and if you let those psalms, psalms, come into your heart, you're going to be taught some things this week that will help you each day. It may be an uh, element personally, it may be something that you can share with someone else, it may be a way that you can lift up and share and teach the people in your in your relationships, your family, your uh, old men with young men, old women with young women, those kinds of things. And as you share these things, God will be glorified. And we, as God's people, will be able to have a song in our heart that's not just on the top 40 on K-Love or Air One or whatever hope stations you're listening to. It'll come out of the songs. So it's a challenge that if we take it, and you practice it will enable us to be able to deal with the tests that are coming our way and to overcome the temptation that Satan's going to throw into you. Know this. Trust in God's word and join in, join together in the Psalms challenge. So here we are at the time of decision. A uh, decision for us to just say, okay, Lord, you've been speaking to me about different things this week. Um, some of you have already faced a test, and you um, you put you gave you gave towards the offering. So you to some of you gave above and beyond. Thank you, Lord. That's your offering to the Lord. Some of you say, Brother Paul, you know, I know I need to do something. So so that's a test that God's going to have you take that step. Trust Him. Some of you say, I don't know Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And I'm trying to make it on my own. And I'm in a dark valley. And I don't have anyone to lean on. I don't have a good shepherd. I, I'm trying to let other people guide me. And, and it's just my life is unraveling. And you've heard a lot of people say amen. Come to Jesus Christ this morning. And Christian, if you've been straying from him, come back to his word. Come back to Jesus Christ. Let him sing into your life. Let him cause you to rest in him and let him get you up and get you back on paths of righteousness on the right paths. That's the good shepherd that's in our heart, Jesus Christ. A song written by David 3,000 years ago. 3,000 years ago. And still one of the most popular scriptures of all time. Psalm 23. And fill full in John chapter 2. Let's pray with it. Lord, as we come before you, we thank you for all that you've given us through Jesus Christ, through this, this song that was written by David. David, a man after your own heart, but David that was a sinner just like us. And Father, he messed up. As a king, he messed up Lord. We know that, and so do all of us. Every one of us in this room have sinned and fallen short of your glory. That you remind us today that we can trust in you. We can trust in your love for us through your son, Jesus Christ. And we want to give Jesus first place in our life. And Father, even right now, as we think about things we can do to grow in our ability to do good works for your name, for your glory, Lord, I pray that you help us to take up this challenge. That we will honor you. And Father, you will speak and see in our hearts these songs and these verses and these scriptures and these thoughts that, will, that you would use to help us uh, in the life we face this week. Oh, Lord, I pray. If there's someone here that needs Jesus, I pray they'll come to you. If there's someone that's straying from Jesus Christ and what you have to do, I pray they'll come and pray and ask just for you to 
to, to renew them and to reorient them get them going back on the right path. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Lord, the Lord's calling you. You come right now. You come right now. As so we stand and sing, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come right now. Jesus, keep me. Let that be a part of 
of your life and let's see what God's it's, it's above and beyond you know we we face these things but let's see what God's going to do in your life bring those back uh, to the Lord you may forgive him I'll have some extra forms but, but uh, you can make your own up you know whatever but we're going to put on that board over there and as we think about these things may God get the glory share that with one another share it uh, uh, with uh, your men's class women's class those kinds of things let the Lord be glorified. Maybe your Sunday school class uh, or Wednesday night group. But as we do those things, we're, we're going to see what God's going to uh, do in our lives. Um, as we uh, last week we had our belonging class, and I want to introduce a few people that uh, not everybody's here today. They have other things they have to be gone, but I want to introduce. Let me see. Uh, uh, Scott, Susan, Floyd, would you all mind kind of joining me for just a minute? And uh, Karen. You, as well, just for a short minute, let me uh, introduce you uh, to uh, to uh, these two families that have, that uh, went through our belonging class. is a way for us to to walk through what we believe as a church are um, some of the key doctrines, uh, what we believe about salvation, baptism, Lord's Supper, uh, as well as some of the things that we do as a church family. And so, usually, people that have been visiting our church or coming for a while, they'll go through and help them. They'll also ask questions. And, some, and, and walk through it. Then at the very end of the class, after we get through with worship, we wrap up with a little meal and we wrap up any other questions and, and they make a commitment. So uh, we have different ways of joining the church, but one of the ways we want them to do is to come through a belonging class uh, as well, as, if at all possible. So that way we can deal with different issues, whether it's baptism or, or uh, you know, we believe about giving, you know, we talk about giving and things like that, uh, missions and sharing our faith. And how we serve. So that's what we do. So, so I'm going to introduce you to those that have said they will make a commitment to join here um, at no price of Lord and Savior, been baptized, and will get part of our church. So y'all know. Uh, in fact, we're having the, the house one. So this one. This is Scott and Susan and their daughter Chloe, and they're coming up on promise a letter from a Baptist Church in Leslie, Michigan. So that's uh, we're we're welcoming them. And so we'll send off a letter for them. And then Karen Crane is coming as well. And she's coming on as well from a church in Fayetteville, that's church in Fayetteville, uh, Arkansas. And so these are coming. They've made, uh, gone through the belonging class and, and um, appreciate them doing that with us last Sunday. So anyway, I would like you all to rejoice with us in their coming to join our churches. Our <laughs> I told them I wouldn't make them stand up and give a big speech, but I would like to at least introduce them. So that, thank y'all. Y'all can go back and, and y'all can uh, uh, welcome them as you leave as well. And so as we finish up today, I think we're going to finish up. And Katie, had, Katie and Rusty were gone on, on revival, um, and we're part of revival up in uh, Still, Stillwell, uh, Oklahoma. And so Katie and Rusty had, had a... a Great experience there, but there's also some God laid on, on a, a word um, that you want to share with us. And so we'll close with what uh, can you share with us, and we'll we'll uh, be through for this morning. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, but or stand in the path of sinners, or seat, sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be as a tree that is firmly planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and his leaf does not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. But the wicked are not so, and they will be less the chaff that the wind blows away. Psalm 1. There is a call to the men in families. And as we all know, there is a shortage of men who leave their families, so the women